Chapter 7, Part 2. Now we're going to look at the cash receipts, payments, and the whole cash budget, and in preparing an income statement budget. Now, the cash budget, again, we would have already prepared all our other budgets in order to get to this point, but um, we start with our beginning cash plus any budgeted cash receipts. That's a separate budget to do. Minus any budgeted cash payments equals the preliminary balance. And then you've got to see if they have to get any loans for the short term or long term in order to cover their cash requirements. All right, so let's take a look at our example. This is a cash receipts from sales budget. Uh, they have 70% of its sales on credit and 30% are cash. All credit sales are collected in full in the first month following the sale. We all know that's not true, but we do it for your homework because the reality is people don't always pay you. The company budget sales for April, May, and June are provided, plus they gave you Marches because you need that to see how much of the prior month you're going to collect in the month of April. So in April, you're going to collect 70% of March's sales. So we start with our sales budget, and then we take that to figure out how much cash we're going to get in the current month. So in April, we're going to take our sales times 30% because that's how much cash we get. And that tells us what portion we're going to get in April. And we do the same thing for May and for June. Now what we've got to do is figure out what we're going to get from the prior month, which is the other 70%. So for um, the month of April, we're going to get 70% of the prior months, which is March. And the same thing is going to happen in May. We're going to get 70% of April's. And in uh, June, we're going to get 70% of May. So this tells us what our cash receipts are going to look like. Now let's take a look at our payments. Again, we start with our material purchases. What are we going to buy? How do we pay for them? Well, according to this, uh, we pay 80% in the month we buy them and 20% in the following month. So we're going to take 80% times all our uh, material purchase numbers. And then we're going to take 20%. So for April, we're going to collect that balance of 20% left over from March. And in May, we're going to collect 20% of April. And in June, we're going to collect 20% of May. And that tells you your cash payments. Now we're going to put this all together in one schedule. Now, cash payment budget. This is very, very important to do because the truth of the matter is you need to do a cash budget because you got to figure out, do I have to borrow money? You cannot wait to the end of the month and say, wow, we need money to meet the payroll. You can't run a business like that. You have to anticipate these things. So you have to look at when am I going to pay for all these different transactions that are going on in my business. Do I plan on making any big purchases? Do I have some big property tax or income tax expenses do I have to make? You have to put that all in your calculation. So let's take a look at our example. Motors Company manufactures dirt bikes. They like to have a minimum of $30,000 at the end of each month. If necessary, the company, to meet the requirement, will borrow, probably have a line of credit, and they pay 2% per month, which is expensive. That's 12% a year. Any preliminary cash balance above 30000 at the month end is used to repay what they borrowed. So there we're gonna, we've got our cash balance uh, was 26000 in July, but we don't owe any money. So we obviously didn't borrow any money to keep it at that level. And the budgeted cash receipts and budgeted cash payments are going to be prepared as follows. So, beginning cash balance is 26000 And this is the kind, when you do this one, honest and truly, you really need to do it month by month. You can't try to do all three months at the same time because you need the information from July 
to do because you need to know the ending balance in July to come up with the beginning balance in August. So we start with the cash beginning balance. We add our cash receipts and we tell them this is how much cash we're going to have available. Then we subtract our cash payments and any interest that we might owe because we've borrowed money. Now, according to the problem, we didn't borrow any money last month, so we didn't do anything. So primarily right now, the way it's looking on our cash budget, we're going to be in the hole $2,000. That's not good. Can't have a negative balance. So we're going to have to borrow money. And to get it back up to $30,000, we are going to have to borrow $32,000. And down here is our loan activity. You want to have that because you want to keep track of what you owe and what you're going to pay. So we started with zero and we borrowed 32 and at the end of the month we owe $32,000. Now in August we started with the 30000 ending cash balance that we calculated in July, our minimum balance. Then we had from our chart up above we had 103000 in cash receipts. We had expenditures, payments of 91009 We have interest on that 32000 of 640 And now we have a total cash payments of 92540 And our preliminary cash balance is 40460 which is greater than 30000 which means we can start paying back our loan. So... If we take away $10,460, we will have our $30,000 in the bank and we will reduce our loan down to $21,540. Now, here's our, we start again with $30,000. We have $142,000 in cash disbursements. You get that from again from the chart up above. We then have our disbursements. Plus, again, remember, we still have a balance of $21,000. By 40, so we have more interest. And that tells us our total cash payments. And now our preliminary balance is 52069 Now, what that means is we can pay off the balance of our loan and not owe anything, but still have $529 left. So we would leave that in our cash account because we don't owe the money anymore. All right, now we've done our cash budget. Now when we go back to our master budget, we've done all our budgets, and now we can do the financial statements. And this, for your homework, you only have to do the income statement. So that's the only one I'm going to go over for you. So we start with this. We know how we need to have units. We need to have uh, how much they sell for, and we need to have our cost of goods sold. So. We have 150000 times $25 because that's what it says they sell for. We have um, $14 times the number of units to get our cost of goods sold. So now we have a gross profit of $1,650,000. We're going to now re uh, get rid of our selling and administrative expenses. And make sure you remember to do the interest. And that tells us income before taxes of three ninety seven three seventy five. We are then going to subtract our income tax, which is at the rate of thirty percent, and now we know our net income. And that ends chapter seven. I hope that helps you with your homework.